<laughs> then I'll begin. Because actually, next year is potentially a year of phenomenal opportunity for us. What do I want to be brought down the chimney by Father Christmas, put in the stocking at the end of my bed as I snooze gently on Christmas morning? Father Christmas takes the sherry or the whiskey, eats the mince pies. Rudolph takes the carrot, which in the Rees-Mogg household is all carefully laid out, as you might expect, with six children. This is um, very much a routine we shall be following. Well, what I want in my stocking on Christmas morning is a Brexit deal for us to offer to the European <laughs> Union. And I don't want any of this monkeying about that we've had the last few days. No. I think that what we had yesterday was deeply unsatisfactory, <coughs> and I don't want anything that puts at threat the United Kingdom. The Conservative Party is the Conservative and Unionist Party. Yeah. And I, for one, believe in the United Kingdom as part of my party more than any other single belief, because that is my country. It is that to which I own loyalty and fealty, and that is very important. So yesterday was not a good day in these negotiations. I don't want any more dancing to the tune of the European Union. So what I don't want, what if yeah, Santa yeah. delivers to me a little puppet on a string dancing away at the instructions of Jean-Claude Juncker, I will send it back to Lapland with my compliments. That is not what I want. What I want is for us to say, we've got money, you want it. We buy your goods, you want to sell to us. So here is £40 billion out of our generosity our charity and our <laughs> kindliness, which we don't think you deserve. <laughs> but in return, this is the trade deal that we want. We want to carry on buying your Mercedes. We're very keen on buying your claret and your champagne. Yeah. <laughs> Some people with bad taste will buy your Prosecco. But <laughs> we will forgive them because we believe in liberty, and if that's, if they really must, they must. <laughs> And in return, you will be able to buy our extraordinarily good financial services that make you an enormous amount of money, and the occasional car that you buy from us, not as many as we buy from you, <laughs> but ours are better made, um, and so on. And I think that is what we ought to be saying. I think we've had enough of being told what to do by the European Union, because we're leaving. That's the key thing. And this seems to be forgotten in the current debate. We talk about the Irish border as if we have to agree with the EU how we will run the Irish border from the United Kingdom. Once we've left, we don't. We simply say, there is no border. We are not patrolling it. We are not going to make it a checkpoint. Even if there are customs and VATs that have to be paid, we're not going to patrol it and control it. And then you do what you like. You, Monsieur Jancar, Say to the Republican Irish, the Republic of Ireland, man your border, put up barricades against Northern Ireland and see what they say in the Republic of Ireland. See if they're willing to go along with that or whether they <laughs> blow an Irish raspberry at you. <laughs> what Irish raspberries taste like, they're probably not doing enough sun, but they get plenty of moisture to get them, get them to fill up. Um, and I think we should challenge them on that basis that we have the upper hand, we have a very strong negotiating position, because without the £20 billion for the multi-annual financial framework, they have no money for the last 21 months of that period. And the EU has no legal ability to borrow. So Mrs May, of her kindness and generosity in Florence, said that nobody would have to pay more, anyone receive less. Well, actually, I want in my stocking the suggestion that if they don't agree our terms, somebody will have to pay more or somebody will have to pay less because they don't want that. And that is the strength of our negotiated position. So next year is a phenomenal year of opportunity in our hands if we are strong. But if we're weak, if we kowtow, if we let them cause us to dance any more at their tune, then we will get a bad departure. We will continue obeying their rules. We will continue being in their customs union, affecting the poorest in our land more than anybody else. And that, if we're to think of a Christmas carol, is the fear of Christmas future unless we get it right. 
that I'm more Jacob Morley, obviously, than Ebenezer Scrooge, purely on the basis of Christian name. But it is, <laughs> you will remember from A Christmas Carol that it is in our hands to change, to reform, to do things properly. So that's what I want, that's what I think we should get, and I think the opportunity is enormous and exciting. So ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs>